The MPC is of the view that it is appropriate to maintain the current accommodative monetary policy stance, given the continued absence of clear signs of excess demand pressures. The MPC has therefore decided to keep the repo rate unchanged at 5.5% per annum. However, the committee will continue to monitor events closely and assess the risks to the outlook on an ongoing basis and stands ready to act in either direction should it be deemed appropriate. Joining me now is Kevin Ling's economist at Stanlib, and that announcement, doesn't it sound familiar? I'm sure I heard the same reasoning in the previous <laughs> MPC announcement is, and the, the announcement beforehand. In fact, just reading through the statement, doesn't that look familiar too? It Nothing is. It has, you know, it has been the same tone, and I guess there, it is actually under these circumstances a yeah. bit of comfort that you can draw from that, um, that the Reserve Bank is sticking to the overall policy environment. In other words, they're not trying to be creative under current conditions. They're not trying to finesse. And I think that's the risk uh, when you're looking at the global situation. You think you can try and finesse local interest well, how, rates or how tweak much more them. How creative can you get when you're sitting at 30-year low interest rates? That's right. But you could be. You could have a little while ago looked at um, the, the move in inflation above six percent, and then said, oh, "Are we going to react to that?" So you could have become or try to tweak rates. Fortunately, they haven't done that, and I don't think they're going to do that. I think rates are on hold for quite some time. But core inflation is looking better, and we know private sector credit extension is. Also also growing. I don't want to mention the unsecured lending bubble. Sure. We don't want to talk about that too sure. much. But uh, you know, overall things are looking slightly better from both ends. Isn't that so? I mean, we've got growth. We've got sec the crop we've got credit, some growth. The growth could growing. definitely be a lot better. Yeah, uh, three percent growth is what we're really expecting this year. Maybe slightly below that. Slightly below, about two point eight percent, but reasonable growth, I would say. Obviously, what we want to see is that that growth broadens, and it's not just consumer growth that it spreads into more general employment growth and more fixed investment growth. So that would be a better sign if it were to broaden, and perhaps if Transnet spends their three hundred billion, we'll see some of that. So there's some the hope around that spending program we're also waiting for that yes, to be yes. now, there are some potentials um, and then on inflation I would say the last number was actually quite encouraging and the outlook it's actually fairly benign the Reserve Bank has, has revised down the inflation target and uh, there are some potential areas where pressure could come through obviously if you looked at what's happening to the exchange rate you could have some pressure there international food prices have moved up a bit you could have some pressure there, yeah. uh, but none of it really uh, to the level that would concern us at this stage. Okay, so what happens if core inflation does rise quite dramatically? And then What's got dramatically? Five well, and a half you know, to six. Yeah, exactly. So sitting then at it's the upper broad end. Uh, and then it's broad-based, but we've still got, what if we still have benign growth in the country? And then you've got <sighs> core inflation rising, Ooh. you've got um, overall CPI uh, sitting in you know levels where it says you've got a hike rates. What then? Then you've got a really difficult situation. Um, you've got an element of stagflation that would then be occurring and if your core inflation rate was heading outside the target range uh, then the Reserve Bank I suspect would have to revert to their main mandate which is to control inflation over the longer term and so they would have to say do we think that core inflation is going to be sustainably above the target and if that is the situation they would have to Is that to a act likely scenario though? No. Not at this stage. Core inflation actually is very well behaved, yeah. um, and you'd have to have a lot going going wrong, so to speak, for that to move significantly higher. Remember that if the let's say that the currency continues to weaken, instead of being 850, let's say it's 870, something like that, and let's say we get in inflation as a consequence of that. That is not necessarily core inflation, and the Reserve Bank wouldn't act against that. We, what you're talking about is a broad-based, clear upward trend in underlying inflation. The Reserve Bank would have to look at that and say, I've got to deal with that component because there are other parts of the economy that has to deal with the growth environment. So most are pushing out their you know, expectations of an interest rate hike. It used to be towards the end of this year. Now next they're looking year. next year. Or I don't, they don't even have it on the table at <laughs> no, the moment. Absolutely. They've moved it off the table. It's on the edge. <laughs> We're waiting for 17th of June and those are the yes. elections in Greece. Who knows what will happen there? But again, the risks are just so rife right now because you could see problems in China, problems in the US, mm. problems in the Eurozone as well. Do you think we would miss mimic what um, you know the interest rate cycle globally and perhaps move interest rates uh, if we start to see you know Ben Bernanke changing his stance or the eurozone yeah. you know getting um, you know strongly into growth which we know is going to be in recession this year we're going to see benign growth next year I mean are we going to wait for those things to stabilize mostly um, if the if we ha went into an environment where the growth rates let's say we get past the Greece situation growth rates start to improve into next year and we we start to see the major central banks moving interest rates steadily higher off exceptionally low base that would be a signal 
signal for all central banks around the world to look at their rates in terms of tightening it. We had low rates, we would start to contemplate that. So it's very difficult to move out of sync, completely out of sync with global interest rates. So I suspect that if you did see that move, we would start to factor that in and in all likelihood we would move to some extent along with that. So it doesn't mean it's a knee-jerk reaction. In other words, yeah. you don't just hike interest rates because the U.S. is hiking. They've got to look at domestic circumstances. But it would generally be signaling that there's more growth momentum in the world economy. And, and when we do um, start seeing a hike in interest rates, are we going to revert back to you know normal levels here in South Africa, away from this 30-year low? I mean, is it going to be a 50 basis point hike, 100? Is it going to be you know numerous over two years? How are we going to revert back to normal? Levels. The way you would generally do it in terms of monetary policy is your first objective when you start to raise would be to try to take interest rates to what's regarded as a neutral level. That would be your starting point. In other words, when you look at interest rates where they are, they would be regarded as stimulatory. And we're sitting at negative real interest rates. Yeah, actually. So that would be in any book a stimulatory interest rate. So your first stopping point would be to hike rates from, from these levels to a neutral rate. What is a neutral rate? You're guessing a bit, but probably around about 200, 250 basis basis points higher than where you are now. So that would be kind of your first objective, that you don't take interest rates up and then just keep hiking them because they're ultimately going to become contractionary and you've got to make sure that that's what's warranted. So there's nothing wrong with saying if growth approaches our potential growth rate in South Africa, so let's assume we've got a growth rate of around 4% in terms of actual GDP, then the appropriate interest rate would be a neutral interest rate, which I would argue would be about two to 250 basis points above the current levels. And that is where you would find an equilibrium. And once you've gone up 250, the Reserve Bank can then say, okay, now do we need to go higher because we now want to actually implement some contractionary effect. Absolutely. But that's not a given. You would first want to get neutral. Okay, so are you worried about what's happening globally? I'm petrified about <laughs> what's happening. So all of the focus. Uh, US, I think, is no longer a big focus. We've got moderate growth there. China, the slowdown, but it's, I don't think it's a hard landing. So all the focus is on Europe and the 17th of June. And I would regard this as a very significant event. Do you think Greece will leave the Eurozone? I'm saying a 60% chance that it stays within the Eurozone. So that's a 40% chance that it leaves. 40% is too uncomfortable for any investment environment. So that means you've got to be very nervous and the markets are reflecting that nervousness. The key for me is whether the Syriza party gains the, 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 the biggest percentage. If they get that, then they get the 50, 50 bonus seats and then I think you're going to get uh, some extreme nervousness. Mr. Tsipras definitely under the spotlight, but markets officially closed in South Africa. We're up half a percent, 33,046 points. As you can see, pretty much green behind me. What a fantastic day much after day. so much <laughs> negativity. Um, you know, are you saying out of the markets right now, Kevin? What are you doing? No, we've, ado we've uh, adopted a, f a fairly positive approach to, to the markets, um, and, that, and it's based on this assumption, and that is that ultimately the parties in Europe will do what is right for the collective. In other words, you don't start to do something that is ultimately going to result in self-destruction. Yeah. And so that there's a compromise in the end. And so you try and keep the Eurozone together uh, as best as you can. If you mess, mess up those politics, then you want to, if you think they're going to mess it up, you want to be underway. Absolutely. Okay, so mostly green across the board. A few spots of red is what we're seeing today. We're up half a percent, as I mentioned. A big thank you to Kevin Ling's economist at Sandlip for joining us today.